Hey everybody, this is John from DroidDog.com. In the time I've spent with Samsung's Vibrant, the phone has really won me over, especially TouchWiz 3.0, which I really wasn't expecting. Clearly the uh, Galaxy S line is at the high end of currently available Androids. Although the T-Mobile version of the phone, the Vibrant, its body looks and feels like a cheap iPhone knockoff. But still the guts are good and I do like the device. So stay tuned to DroidDog.com for my full review which is coming up soon. For now, let's get to your questions and requests. First question, can you show us the lock screen controls including the music player controls? Okay, so first I'll just show you what happens when you miss a call or messages when your phone is asleep. When you wake it up and you look at the lock screen here, you have two puzzle pieces. You can see that I've missed one phone call and two text or MMS messages. So I'm going to go ahead and drag those text messages into that puzzle piece, the empty puzzle space right there. And so here you see I, it says this is a test message, another test. These are ones that I sent to myself. So I've looked at those text messages now. And if I put the phone back to sleep and wake it up again, now I only have that missed call puzzle piece. But uh, there you go. So it takes you right to it, and you can just press a button to call right there. Now, if you put your phone to sleep while you have a music file playing, and you wake it up, you're going to see the bottom of a CD up there. Now, you can either drag that down and control tracks from there, which is really useful. Or, if you wake it up with this button on the side and then hit the home button, those controls drop, drop down and you can hit the home button to hide them again. And what happens if you have your music player running and you get a missed call or missed message? You'll have all of those options available to you there. So we can skip tracks. And what if I want to go to my home screen and I don't feel like dealing with those messages yet? Pause that. But I don't want to forget about them later. So let's go to the home screen. Okay, do whatever I need to do. Let my phone go back to sleep, wake it back up. I'm still reminded that I've got a missed call and two missed messages. I've received a number of questions about how well the camera works without a flash as well as uh, how effective the nighttime mode is, which you can see right here under scene mode you select night. And it actually works really well um, and I'm going to include a few samples here in this post at Droid Dog. So if you're watching at YouTube, click the link down below the video. If you're at Droid Dog, the pictures are just right beneath where this video is embedded. Next question, how is the multi-touch on this phone and is the keyboard multi-touch? Well, I've had nothing but positive experiences with the multi-touch on this phone. It's very responsive, snappy, um, you might see a little bit of lag here on maps because it needs to download images, but the actual multi-touch control is excellent. I have zero complaints. If I want to press shift and then T, I'll get a capital T. If I hold down A and then hit L, I get AL. So yes, it's multi-touch. There are uh, three keyboards installed here by default, you get the default Android keyboard, Samsung keypad, and swipe. Um, so yeah, multi-touch in every situation so far has been uh, excellent. Next question, can this phone sync with my Exchange calendar? Yes it can, but I don't have a demo account to uh, show it working here. If you go into your calendar, menu, settings, and then calendar sync, and then click add account, one of your options is corporate. And you see there it says you can configure an exchange account in just a few steps. And I got there from the calendar settings. So yes you can, I'm sorry I can't uh, demonstrate that working for you. Can you walk us through the music player? Sure. It's uh, very cool, looks much better than the default Android music player. Um, you know, the little touches that aren't necessarily um, essential to the function of the music player sometimes are just nice to have. I like a smooth interface and uh, this music player is slick and so if you're in the now playing screen you get the uh, the artist right here it's the title of a show the album again the title of a show and the song here it's just a date if I go back into a musical group then you can see here actually I'm sorry name of the track name of the artist album I got that mixed up and you have your 5.1 channel surround sound effect but that only works with headphones and if I had multiple tracks, I could swipe through those, but as it is, I'm swiping through albums. Playlists. It has smart playlists that are automatically generated. You can browse by album, browse by artists. Here in landscape mode, each album is represented by the image of a CD, which is 
pretty cool. Tap it again, starts playing that. You see the little magnifying glass up top there? Cool animation. Go back to the discs. Make it look kind of like a compass here and I can navigate through some albums that way. Pretty neat. Goes back to the now playing screen as soon as I'm in portrait mode. Volume control on screen. Scrolling title. Have controls here in your drop down menu. So yeah, it's, it's pretty great actually. Next person wants to know if I can run uh, Quadrant Standard on this device. I think I already have, but yeah. Let's go ahead and do it. Full benchmark. If you look at the frames per second that this phone gets, it's just crazy. I also have seen a number of demonstrations with uh, Neo Core compared against the other flagship Androids that are out there right now. and The Galaxy S series of phones just kicks butt. Like I said, you know, the outside does not match the inside of this phone. It really doesn't. It feels so light and, you know, I didn't really think of it at first, but a lot of people looked at it and said, oh my gosh, what an iPhone ripoff. But to me, it's, that's not the worst part of it. It's just that it feels so, it, it feels chintzy to me. But anyway, here we go. You got to remember this phone is running 2.1 update one. Um, so I fell in just underneath the other Galaxy S's, like, really really close though and that might just be because I didn't do a fresh boot um, but yeah when we get 2.2 on this you can expect it to go through the roof I'm, I'm pretty sure it's gonna go uh, way past the Nexus 1 running for OEL. I've also received a number of requests to run Lin Pack for Android on it so here we go 8.485 mega flops let's try it again 8.252 Yeah, we're seeing a lot of Galaxy S's at the top of this list here. And now it's time for NeoCore. Fifty five point one frames per second. Not bad. Next question. Somebody wants to know how much internal memory is available to the user when you first pull it out of the box before you install any applications from the market. And uh, since this is my last day with the phone, I'm going to go ahead and show you that. So I'm doing a factory data reset here. And this will take a moment to be completed. Now when it reboots, I'm just going to sign in and download one app that will tell us about available memory. And I'll take this time here to say I'm sorry if you sent in a, a question and I didn't get to it. It's a busy season for phones. I've got a lot of them. Uh, in my place right now working on many projects so I kinda need to get through these quickly I got to the most commonly asked questions at least alright so I've got sys tray monitor installed there we go for free internal memory you can see one gigabyte out of one gigabyte is available SD card says 12 gigs out of 12 gigs free RAM 103 megabytes
And just to show you guys what this thing looks like when you first pull it out of the box, the widgets, the apps they have on the home screen, wallpaper, those of you who are interested. There she is. It's a beautiful phone. Um, on the inside. It's pretty on the inside. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about its body. But it's got personality. Oh